Hey folks, Craig here, and today I thought I would share with you my Nintendo Switch collection. And I thought I'd do it uh, right here on the Nintendo Switch itself because the all software section has an icon for every game that I own, uh, physical and digital. Uh, although I will do a cutaway to my physical library so you can see that. Um, I don't really consider myself a, a Switch collector. I thought early on that I might collect for it, um, but even early on it became apparent that that would be challenging. Um, not just because there's a lot of great games, uh, there are a lot of great games for the Nintendo Switch, but uh, it's really the indie games and their physical releases that are a, a, an issue. Um, you just, you, you never know when they're going to come out, if they're going to come out, how much they're going to cost, where they'll be. I mean, there's like, there's got to be like, like a half dozen boutique publishers now, uh, like Limited Run or Fan Gamer or Super Rare. And sometimes they do surprise releases, like a year after the, the digital version comes out. You just never know when they're going to come out. And it just, it became, uh, I don't know, for me, too much, uh, too, too much time and, and too, too, much, too much of a money commitment that I, that I was really comfortable with. Um, but I do own a fair number of games. I own about 100 games, I think might be even on the nose, um, between physical and digital. But most of them are digital. Uh, so I wouldn't really consider myself a collector by any means. I just I just play the games that I want to play. Turns out there's about a hundred of them over the last three years or so. Um, and we have them here alphabetically. I don't really have anything... Uh, I don't really have anything to say about every game necessarily. Um, so, you know, there's... Uh, if there are enough people saying like, Oh, I want to know more about this or know more about that. Maybe I'll do like a compilation video of some of those requests, but we have Arena of Valor, ARMS, which is a great game. It, it you know, released early in the Switch's life, and um, it, it, it appeared to me to be filler. I think a lot of people thought the same thing too, but I think ARMS is great. A lot of personality, fantastic music. And they had these online things that were kind of like Splatfests. Uh, I think they were called like block parties or something, and those were really a lot of fun. Uh, Battle Chef Brigade, Bayonetta 1 and 2, uh, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, which I was a Kickstarter backer for, and then of course Ritual of the Night, which is the NES-inspired uh, game. Blossom Tales, Bulletstorm, Duke of Switch Edition, okay. Celeste, which is fantastic. Crossing Souls, uh, the first Darksiders. Dead Cells, Diablo 3. Digimon Story, Cyber Sleuth, and this is two games in one. And this is really great, honestly. These Digimon games are, they're a little cheesy, but, uh, you know, some of the dialogue is not, like, well-written, but they're actually really good. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Dragon Quest Builders 2, Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition, in the running for one of the best names of all time, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, Earthlock, Enter the Gungeon, Fast RMX, Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, Fortnite, Ghostbusters, Golf Story, Graceful Explosion Machine, Grandia HD Collection, and I'm so happy that Grandia 2 is playable on Modern Machines, now we just need to get Skies of Arcadia on a Modern Machine, preferably the Switch, and uh, the Dreamcast RPG Duo will be complete. Hollow Knight, Hyrule Warriors, Into the Breach, Just Shapes and Beats, Kamiko, Killer Queen Black, Luigi's Mansion 3, Luminous Remastered. My, my favorite Luminous will always be the, the Vita one, but you can't go wrong with any Luminous. Mario Plus Rabbits, Kingdom Battle, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Minecraft, Moonlighter, which is, Moonlighter is a great game, don't sleep on Moonlighter. Um, I got it on sale and I was like, yeah, maybe I'll like this, but I ended up playing a ton of it. Uh, and, and honestly, I don't like games that have inventory management. It's like a mini game, like Resident Evil, where you have to like shuffle things around Tetris style. Um, I generally don't like that, but Moonlighter does it really creatively. I think, they, I think, I think it's really good. My time at Portia or Portia, I'm not sure which. Portia to me sounds better than Portia. I think of Ellen DeGeneres' wife, Portia de Rossi or whatever, so uh, <laughs> I prefer my time at Portia. Uh, New Super Lucky's Tale, which is a recent release and that's a great platformer. Reminds me of um, 
Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS. Nino Kuni, uh, I might be one of the few people that prefer the second game. I wouldn't say it's a better game necessarily, but I prefer the second game and I would love to see it on Switch. Night in the Woods, uh, the NES uh, library for Nintendo Switch Online members, Okami, Overwatch, uh, perhaps, I don't know, one of my top five favorite modern games, Oxenfree, Paladins, which is like a free version of Overwatch, like a budget version of Overwatch, it's free to play. Uh, I pay for the Founders Pack, so I have access to all characters. Uh, it's not bad if you don't feel like paying for Overwatch. Pixel Jerk Monsters 2, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, Puyo Puyo Tetris, which I never thought I'd see in the West, but I'm glad that it's here. Puzzle Quest, Rhyme, Saints Row the Third, the full package, because of course we have to work some uh, naughty language into the title here for Saints Row. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Sayonara Wild Hearts is my favorite game of 2019. Um, the year's almost over, I feel comfortable saying that. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's fantastic. And speaking of indie games where you have to wait for the physical release, I've already pre-ordered the physical release, but it doesn't even come out until like next year. But that's a fantastic game, a fantastic soundtrack. Uh, Sega Genesis Classics. Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Can't go wrong with Shovel Knight. I think I own it on three platforms now. Sid Meier Civilization VI. Snake Pass. Snipper Clips, Splatoon 2, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, Stardew Valley, which I have sunk. I, I am so glad I waited for the Switch release of this. I, I, I was champing at the bit to play Stardew Valley. As a as a old school Harvest Moon fan, I, I could not wait to play this game. And, uh, you know, I passed on every other platform. I waited for the Switch version and it was just, you know, it was handheld bliss. It was such a perfect game for the Switch. Uh, I absolutely love it, and I love all the updates. It's it's a fantastic game. Steam World Dig Two, uh, great. Steam World Dig Two is is great. I love Steam World Dig One and Two. Super Mario Maker Two, Super Mario Odyssey, uh, the Super Nintendo uh, games for Nintendo Switch Online members. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Super Hot, also a game that like I waited forever to play. I don't I don't know what I was waiting for. I, I wasn't waiting for like a Switch release because there's no indication it was coming to Switch. But when it when it did, I, I finally I finally bought it on Switch, and that that is a great game. Tales of Vesperia, uh, I would say probably my favorite Tales game, and I'm so glad it's on Switch. It was great to relive it. Team Sonic Racing, which is a really solid racing game. Um, I'm just disappointed that it doesn't have the other Sega characters and Sega tracks and references like the other games in the series do. It's so just it's such a good game and it would just would be so much better if the other characters were in it. Uh, Tetris 99, which I, I was decent at <laughs> the first two days of release and then once everyone else started playing it, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly not the Tetris champion I thought I was. Uh, the Elder Scrolls uh, 5, Skyrim, and I have tried to play Skyrim several times before it was on Switch, and it finally clicked with me on Switch, and, you know, as a handheld gamer, um, I, I think I think it clicked on Switch for me because I could just sort of, like, passively play it, you know. For me, the Elder Scrolls games are not, I know some people are going to hate me for saying this, but I don't find them wildly engaging. Like, I don't think the stories are that great, the dungeons aren't that great. You just sort of like wander through the fucking forest and then like punch some wolves or something. Like it's, it's not that engaging to me. So like the fact that I could play it while also like watching TV was a big benefit for me. And I ended up, I mean, I know some people put hundreds of hours in the Skyrim, but I could only manage maybe like a dozen or so before the Switch release. And I think now I have like 60 or 70. So, you know, it being handheld really does a lot for me. You know, handheld gaming for me is just so much more convenient than playing on a TV. Uh, the Flame and the Flood, um, which is like the sort of like roguelike survival game. I think from X people from uh, Irrational Games, people were from Bioshock. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is my favorite game of all time. Uh, long time TV and list viewers might know that Majora's Mask was my favorite game for a very long time. Uh, but uh, Breath of the Wild to me just is everything that Majora's Mask does, but does it better and then just does a bunch of stuff all its own. Um, I, it's an utterly incredible game, but perhaps once in a lifetime. I love Breath of the Wild. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, uh, a really good update of a, a really weird <laughs> Zelda game. It's hard to it's hard to understand how weird it is 
And so you put it in the context of other games in the series that came later, but uh, uh, you know, just a classic game, one I really enjoyed on the Game Boy. The Messenger, which I, I only bought just recently. Um, and I know there's a twist. I know what the twist is, because it, you know, is not a big secret, but, um, uh, but I'm not gonna spoil it for other people. We don't want it to be spoiled, but I haven't, I haven't come to the twist yet. So like, that's how early on I am. Like the, I have done maybe three levels or something. The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, which is a really admirable adaptation of The Witcher. Um, you know, from again, for me, handheld is just way more convenient. I prefer playing games handheld. And as a handheld player, as other handheld players know, you know, sometimes you gotta make concessions to play games. But making concessions in terms of control or functionality or complexity uh, for years. And now we can get games that are just as complex as The Witcher 3, um, but you know, just they don't look as pretty. And that's fine, I'm okay with that. That's the one concession I have to make. Okay, that's fine. The World Ends With You, Final Remix. An, uh, an incredibly disappointing <laughs> version of The World Ends With You, which is uh, my favorite DS game, just a game that had a big impact on me. I really enjoyed it. My first video, <laughs> my first video game video here on YouTube was The World Ends With You. I just sat down in front of my MacBook and talked about it. It's, uh, it's a big deal for me, but this Switch version is, is not good. I don't have time to go into it here, but um, I mean, if it's your only way to play it, okay, but Square Enix did some weird stuff with this version, and it's disappointing that it has all this new content, but it's like locked within a less than ideal way to play the game. Thumper, Tiny Metal, Transistor, a game that did not click for me the first time. I, I was playing it wrong. I don't, I loved Bastion. Uh, this studio's, uh, I forget, Supergiant is their name, I think. Uh, I loved Bastion, and so I was really amped up for Transistor, and I downloaded it when it first came out, and I, I think I just played it wrong. I think it was the problem. I was playing the combat system all wrong. I was playing it like a real-time action game, and that's not really how you're supposed to play it. It's more turn-based, more strategy. And I was like, fuck that, I'm just gonna hit everything with my sword, and that didn't do me any good, so. <laughs> uh, but I've really come to like it my second time around. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, which is, you know, it's not like No More Heroes on, it's actually more similar to No More Heroes on the Wii than it initially lets on. Um, it's just a different perspective, maybe. Not a bad game. Not what No More Heroes fans were hoping for, maybe, but not a bad game. Tumbleseed, Turok, and Turok 2. Big fan of Turok 2, one of my favorite games on the Nintendo 64. Valkyria Chronicles 4, a nice return to form for Valkyria Chronicles after being uh, handheld and like more teenager-y uh, for a couple of entries there. Valtherian Arc Hero School Story, which feels like a Dreamcast game, like through and through. You manage a school of heroes and then you have to equip them and, you know, they go to class or whatever and then you control them on their quests, which are like really simple quests. And it's really corny and simple, but I also kind of like like it in a retro kind of way. Warframe, which is a game that I really want to like more than I do because, you know, there's a lot of game here for free. Like it's like a, it's almost like a whole game for free. Um, anything you anything cosmetic or equipable will cost you money, but the whole game is free. It's just that the game bombards you with resources and pr proper nouns and stuff that just never explains to you what they do. I had to wiki everything. Uh, to understand that game because the game is otherwise inscrutable. Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap, World of Final Fantasy Maxima, which I also owned on the Vita, but just, I guess I wanted it on a newer system. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and as someone who felt, I just didn't enjoy the first two Xenoblade games, uh, this one clicked for me. It's a little too weeby for my taste or some weird, I don't know, like fan service and anime stuff in there but i like i do the overall like the, the art style better it's brighter and more colorful and it's more i think it's more accessible than the other two but yoku's island express a weird metroidvania pinball game that people seem to love but just could not click for me yonder the cloud catcher chronicles um and this game so the, Yonder, i played a ton of yonder but i didn't i didn't really you know like play the game um, because all of its more traditional, like, gameplay systems, like, questing, or, like, farming, or, like, whatever, are not very good. They're sort of half-baked, and they feel kind of incomplete. Um, but the island that the game takes place on is massive. It's huge. And so I treated Yonder like a sightseeing game. In fact, I posted a lot of pictures of it, uh, 
on Twitter as I was playing, and people would be like, what, what is that game? And it's yonder. And it's, it's, if you just want to wander around, like turn your brain off and like wander around and sightsee, yonder is fantastic for that. I cannot recommend it enough as like a chill game. But if you actually want to like complete quests and like finish the game, like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Uh, ukulele. I was a Kickstarter backer for it, and gotta be honest, I think it's messy, and I don't think it's very good. Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. I've only played a little bit of this because um, I, I only bought it just recently, and overall, it's better. But um, the beginning, there's a lot of dialogue that you have to like button mash your way through. It's not as clever as they think it is either, so it's really annoying. But overall, it seems like a better game. So that is my Switch library. Sort of breezed through it in about 15 minutes, but. I hope you enjoyed it, and if there are any games in here that you want to know more about, you know, uh, maybe I'll do like a compilation video where I go into a little more detail. But overall, I would say that there aren't too many bad games in the bunch here. Uh, maybe no bad games, really. Maybe just some games that clicked with me that didn't that didn't click with me. Most of them did, but there are a few that perhaps are not to my taste completely. But Switch has a great and varied library, a lot of ports. But you know, for someone like me. Uh, there's value in those ports and the fact that I can play them portably now. I'm not anchored to my TV. So for me, there's value in that. Uh, I don't I, I don't even connect my Switch to the TV. It's never been on the TV. I've never put my Switch on the TV. So it's always been handheld for me. So hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, you guys take it easy.